hello and welcome back to the adventures of the free company like and subscribe haha <laughs> gotcha anyway last scenario we just defeat a giant slug monster and got our own pet golem which is super cool and let us see what the future holds in store for us as we enter chapter 10. the water rises filling your eyes ears and mouth you instinctively hold your breath frantically searching for an exit. The room has no doors, no windows. It is not your burning lungs that scare you. It is that you are out of options, no escape from the inevitable. You jolt awake and immediately take a deep breath. It does not take a dream reader to tell you the meaning of that one. You know the mendicants are dead. You fought men and monsters to bring them here. Hells, you nearly went mad and it still meant nothing, just more bodies for the pyre. The plague has spread through them like wildfire. Their precautions, herbs and unguents, could not save them. A few who had survived cited malefic powers and dared not return to the infected areas that grew larger every day. You could not blame them. Whatever it was, it was beyond their craft, perhaps beyond everyone's craft. You shake your head straight. That kind of thinking gets you killed. There is always another way, you tell yourself, as the dream flashes in your mind once more. Instructions. Place the Vera map from mystery envelope B. Yeah, 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 yeah. Place a free company marker on location 7. Done. Place the location 7 marker on the time track. Take the path A card. Oh. We start with a time. That's not something that usually happens. Then, if we have the golem ally card, if not, we do have the golem. We got a pet, so let's see what that happens. Opening your chamber door, still a bit drowsy, you come to a dead stop. A giant towers inches before you, staring at you motionless, the golem. You had forgotten about it, but it is there where you left it, having been ordered to stand guard. You command it to move, but it stares at you unblinkingly. You prepare to shout at the thing, then remember, cursing under your breath, you collect the control rod and, gripping it in your hand, direct the thing again. This time, it moves. You start to think. You may not so much have gained a tool as lost a hand. If we have the Quintus ally cord, if you have the Finian ally cord, or if I have neither, do I have any of them? Uh, Golem, Quint I do have Quintus, but do I have Finian? I do not. So, let's see what Quintus has to say. As you descend the stairs, the common room is nearly full, even at this hour. Yet there is a suppressed air to the place. The news of the mendicants is the talk of the city. Good morning, Grey Cane calls, the only smiling face you see in the room. Bram's been working on a new recipe for wool plaster. It's not plaster, it's porridge. And it didn't stop you eating two bowls, Bram retorts, turning his nose up to Greycane. Looks like I'm not the only one who rebuffs your cooking, old boy, Greycane says, nodding to Quintus. The fully armoured adjutant sits bent over in the corner, staring intensely into his full bowl of porridge. You can see it's not the food that gives him pause. Joining him, you ask what is wrong. I've failed them. They were my charge, and I was found wanting. Did I sin? I must have sinned, or this would not have happened. I should go back to Cistercia, to be back in the light of the church, to do penance. Quintus is a man of strong faith, and he is looking for an answer to why this happened. The news of the mendicants. Okay, we can choose one. Say that he cannot let the lack of an answer stop him. This is what faith is about. Or say the one has left us long ago. It's neither in the one's hands that causes... Good Lord. No, we're, we're not fucking... Child eating atheists here, we believe in the one. Say the la that is this is what faith is all about. Let's go. He ponders your words for a while and then finally looks up at you. You're right, we cannot fathom the will of the one. Only by keeping faith can we make sure that his work will be done. Thank you, Oath Sworn. I will continue with you on this path, and when the one deems me worthy, perhaps then he will answer me. Leaving the man with a new sense of purpose, you return to the bar, taking bowls proffered by Bram and making your way to your table. Always glad to bring people back to the light. 
We have two options, if you have the Dane ally card or not. We do not, so let's see what happens. You break your fast, pondering over the changing capital. Whole new sections of the city have fallen to the plague, with guards standing in line, hindering people from leaving or entering. You have seen four adults get into a fight over an apple, one gutting another with a knife, and then, worst of all, hearing the news about the mendicants. Looking around the room, you recognize the insidious danger of hopelessness on the faces you find there. Perhaps something to pick up the spirits. Spirits to pick up the spirits? We have an option. Either ask Grey King to tell a story or buy everyone around. We can only do that if we have at least 10 gold. We do. But do I want to spend it? We are getting up in the chapters, which means the, what's it called, curatives and the items are going to be becoming more and more expensive. Mm, although I do have a whole backpack full of stuff I need to sell. Yeah, let's get everybody drunk. Instructions, let me guess, spend 10 copper, gold, whatever it's called. Lose 10 hour, iron. All Osworn gain empowered 3 token. I'll, t I'll take that. Around on the house, you yell, and the whole room answers with cheers. As the drinks are served, Everyone lifts their cup to each other's health and enjoys this small moment of unforeseen good luck. Moments like these are important, but raising spirits won't help get rid of this killer plague. You continue to talk amongst yourself until you hear the door open and all talk and movement around you dies. The silhouette of a hooded figure is visible against the morning sun, lingering on the doorstep, seemingly hesitant to enter. Then it silently steps into the amber-lit room. There are a few gasps and murmurs. This is no ordinary visitor. Piercing eyes from a green-skinned, mouthless face find you in an instant. She pulls back her hood and reveals, instead of hair, long vines growing from her head, entangled in an elaborate braid, an adendry. Grey cane finally breaks the spell and motions her closer. Heroes of Bastone, he says with a wink. I would like to introduce you to a friend of mine. She has helped me find more than a few things since we have been here, and what she lacks in words she makes up for in eyes. Turning to the Adendri, he makes swift hand motions in the knock. You know enough of it to communicate the basics, but find it hard to follow Grey Cane's rapid clicking, clapping, and gesturing. He seems to have a vast treasury of words in any language. The Adendri knocks in reply, and you can discern she has an offer she wants to bring before the leader with the hat. From past interaction, you know this to mean the king. Greykin takes over the translation. She says, The word of the mendicants has reached the green streets. The Adendri know what many in this city think of them. They are scorned and... Hated, yet this is their home too. They wish to help. She says if anyone can save the city now, it will be those in her homeland. They know more of the ways of nature than anyone. She is offering to take you to the fabled witchwood. Taken aback, you look more closely at the female. You know what it means for any Adendri to want to return to that place. Those that call the Green Streets home arrived as refugees from the Witchwood, and although you do not know exactly what happened there, whatever it was, it was bad enough to risk the Deepwood to escape it. No one has ever been to the Witchwood and returned to tell the tale. Yet, still tales have arisen. Its very name is a derivation of the word witch. Men with a belly full of ale concoct fabulous stories of its horrors. You have no wish to go there. Yet everyone loses if the plague wins, and right now you are out of cards to play. You exchange knowing glances with each other. Ultimately, it won't be your decision. The king will need to hear this. Rising from the table to prepare to head to the palace, you ask what you are to call the Adendri, and you get a single gesture in reply. Guide. Instructions. Gain the ally core 23. Guide. Place location 28 and go there. Okay, let's take a look at Guide first. Guide is a non-combat ally. 
I forgot to check the non-combat allies for the people, but apparently they're not here, so it's fine. And, yep, just a non-combat ally. Place location 28, the palace, and we go there. The king considers your words. His blue eyes pierce you, seeking the right path through what you've just said. An expedition to the Witchwood, says hi, Captain Trent. It is a bold move. If they dare to do it, I don't see why we shouldn't take the chance. Without breaking eye contact with you, the king replies, Fools make an ally of chance, High Captain. Our free companies are our most valuable assets. They are not to be squandered, especially not this one. Thank you for the high regards, King, but we have instructions. Perform a reasoning check, difficulty five. <clears throat> Okay, difficulty five. We're just going to roll three white dice and whatever will be, will be. I'm pretty sure we're going to go here no matter what, so I don't really think we have to reason with him all that much. And we get it out the bat. Not even close. You find some clear words to describe Verum's situation and paint a vivid picture of how fast a city can fall if its guards are weakened by plague or death. You do not want to go to the Witchwood, but since when has that meant anything? You will not sit around and wait for the end. That is not your way. If the Adendri have a cure, you say, we will find it. You see agreement in most faces, and the king nods respectfully. It seems he had wanted to see how committed you were. The king glances towards a watcher who has been standing on the opposite side of the room the whole time. Then his majesty rises. There shall be an expedition to the Witchwood supported by the crown. Preparations shall begin immediately. The clerk looks up at you from his scroll. The king has granted you his full support for the expedition. The king wishes several specialists to join you on the journey, and we need some time to assemble them and arrange what is needed. Some provisions will be provided, but the crisis will make this difficult. You can use the limited time to prepare anything additional you need for yourself. A few extra rations and a new blade wouldn't hurt, the clerk says, as if you had never been beyond the city gates. He is not wrong, though, and you do not know what you will find on this journey. You try to ask a guide how long the journey will be, and a few knocks convey the less than helpful, long. Careful preparation would be wise. Well, that's not ominous. Instructions. You have until slot 5 on the time track. That is not a lot of time. We're already on slot 2. Uh, for your journey, gather what equipment, extra rations, blessings, or information you may need for your journey. Place location tokens. 4. The Green Streets. 6, the Apothecary, 13, the Market, 15, the Church, and 19, the Banksmith. <laughs> okay, so who do you want to go to first? Fuck it, you already know we're going to the Banksmith. 19. You easily find the way to the Banksmith, as you have often been here, but you have never seen such a surge of customers. People have not only come here to purchase supplies, but also weapons and armor. They are truly preparing for the worst, whatever they think that is. A line of city guards is in place to keep the masses back. Instructions. You may start a trade with Blanksmith. You may can also purchase up to four rations here for five iron each. Track the amount of rations you have for tracker token. Oh, Lord. We are going to spend... Almost half of our iron, 20, in order to buy four rations. Because this seems like something we freaking need. And let's start selling some junk, shall we? Let's see. Da -da -da. No one can use this, so we're going to sell it. Max reduced by one, all adjacent in. Oh, that's so neat. I'm going to hold on to that. Hold on to that. Four play, we're definitely going to hold on to that. Hold on to that. A shield. 
It's my only other shield, so we'll keep it. What's this? I don't think we need this, so we'll sell this. This is a level six, and we haven't used it yet, so we'll get rid of this. Ooh, that's a nice one. We'll keep it. Plus two throne. I don't like thrown weapons. I already have a thrown cord, so we don't really need a uh, actual thrown weapon. <clears throat> the Delorean blade. Um, Delorious, not Delorean. God. That you may draw. And we'll sell that too. It's another level six we haven't used. An extra dagger might be good to hang on to before drawing damage. Ooh, that's kind of good. Another throne we're going to get rid of. We're not. I do not trust my luck enough to deal with that. So, yeah. A range, whatever. We haven't used that. And it's probably only be for bear. And we'll keep a spare bow for Ranger, even though it's a level 3. Do I keep it? Yeah, we'll keep it. <clears throat> so, it is half rounded up. So this is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 20, uh, 25, 29 gold we get from this. 10. 30 and some change. So, okay, we're back up to 66. And let's see what he has in store for us. The sea bag, which we sell last on a battle axe. When you critical during attack that hits, draw two additional cards rather than one. That could be, it has a black. It might be nice for the um, Pentient, Mimitate. We'll put this in the maybe. A two-handed. Gain one defense. Nah, we're not doing that. Bear can't even equip that. I don't know I'm looking at it. This could be something for Kerr. Two yells before drawing damage. For your first attack in a round, gain a red. Mm, that's it. We'll put this in a solid maybe. Three, battle for a cord. And four, there's an adjacent Oswan. Gain... <laughs> a red dice and attack or basic check. That's pretty cool. Ooh, a tower bow. Another dirk we don't really need. Two handed. Nah. Nah. Ooh. No damn. Eh, nah. Nobody for that. Okay, so do we want the bow? When you attack, spend any amount of animus to add two reins to the attack for each spent. Uh, range five. Two reds. Uh, I think that's a bit better than the black bow. So we're gonna buy this for Ranger. Two black, is a black better than two yellows? Probably. So do that. I don't know if we really need this for Kerr right now. Oh, what the hell, we'll do it. So that is 30 gold, we're out. The 30 we just got, we spent right back. And we're going to equip these items we got immediately and put the rest into our backpack. I will worry about changing the dice. Well, let me start the camp, start the encounter, because I'm sure I won't forget. That is that. Where do we want to go to next? I guess the market, see if we can't find some more rations. You are no stranger to the market, but now you barely recognize the place. There are roadblocks at every entrance where the city guard takes a stand to keep back the crowd, letting people in only one at a time. You cannot help but notice that those that may pass are also the ones with the biggest pouches. You push past with ease, people giving you a wide berth, but as you enter, you find there is not much of a market left, most of the stalls are near empty with their vendors shrugging at you apologetically. As you look around, a feisty merchant approaches you. Going beyond the gate? I have just what you need. I've been waiting for a customer like you. You may have exactly what we need, but when we enter time four, we covered a city event. So we're going to resolve that before we delve into the instructions. So let's see what we get. 
shuffle, shuffle, one, two, three. And we get, if the golem is part of your company anymore, or could I have this and draw another? He's still here. A closely shaven man beckons you into the alley. The thing of yours, he says now to the golem behind you, I have a patron who pay well for it. He then offers you enough iron to purchase several items for a new company. Do you accept the offer, try to haggle up the price, or refuse the offer, archive this event? I mean, we're so good, we're not going to need any more allies, right? We are pretty low. We only have 36. God, this is tough. But it is a double black attack. That could really be useful if we have to spawn in a companion. God, what to do, what to do. A six defense and double black. We're going to hold on to it. We're going to hold on to him. We are going to archive this one. And we will just never know how much we could have gotten. Anyway, uh, the instructions are... You can purchase up to six rations for three iron each. Track the amount of rations. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna buy them all because eighteen. We're down to eighteen gold. We do have ten, so hopefully that will be enough. As you head out, you leave the hungry crowd behind you, wondering which is the bigger threat: the plague itself, or what it makes people do. You know what those empty stalls will mean for the city. You must succeed. Uh, okay, last action. We're going to go to location 15, the church, because, hey, why not? A royal messenger finds you and tells you that preparations for the expedition are complete. You are expected to report to the palace at your earliest convenience. Oh, I guess we're not going to church. If we have the Herald Airlight Court or not, do I? I don't believe I do. Oh, we do have the Herald. He's a soothsayer. Nice. Let's see what happens then. As you cross the old stone bridge over the gutters, the Herald stops abruptly, grabbing you like a drowning man. This is the place where you first met him. His mad eyes stare into the distance, seeing something else that is not there, something terrifying. One dream, two ends, in a place with none, where the moor consumes and shadows one. One voice, two faces, where landless runs. Beware the father, beware the son. He shudders and comes back to you. Instructions. Place your free company marker on location 28. As you enter the palace courtyard, you find a gaggle of disparate characters checking packs and in discussion with the various servants who are helping with the final preparations for the expedition. You knew the king wanted to send others with you, but had not expected a group of academics. You doubt if any have ever been in the shadow of the Deepwood. A rather stiff official greets you in full formality before launching into an introduction of the people present. May I present the royal botanist, Lady Merilla, and her assistance. Their knowledge may help you in identifying and safely transporting potential cures, he says. Then moving to the next woman, may I also present Lady Edith, an archivist of the Third Circle, who shall keep a true record of events and knowledge gleaned from the Witchwood. She also has some scribes to support her task. I am certain you will find their wisdom and extensive historical knowledge quite invaluable. As the official pauses to draw breath, a large man in full plate armor interjects, making sure he is being introduced properly by taking matters into his own hands. I am Sir Cyprian, Knight of the Realm. For thirteen generations, members of my family have served the crown. I have volunteered to protect these ladies and yourselves with my life against all horrors that might befall us on our brave expedition. Sir Cyprian has a few manservants and a squire with him that he did not think worth mentioning. The instruction is to begin another pet. Gain the ally card 24, 25, 26. Each ally card represents your entire group. In addition, your minute arms have been upgraded. Archive all starting men at arms, ally cards, and gate, ally cards, 27, 28, 29, 30. We gain a lot of pets, okay.
Goodbye, Min and Owens. We had four because we never used the damn things. 24 is Marilla. Marilla and Herbalist. 25 is Edith. Ah, uh, she's a cutie. And 26 is Cyprian, a knight. How is he a non-combat ally? Come on now. And 27, 28, 29, 30. Which are these guys? Okay, and the new uh, man in arms is one red, two yellows with three defense. Move four, attack after the Sally die. They may be regained from the archive from out of iron equal to your current level. I got With the awkward introductions out of the way, the official then grants you access to a selection of weaponry, armor, and other equipment, as well as stockpiles of food. You remind everyone that you will want to travel light, so space is limited, but rations will be necessary for everyone. Considering the road ahead, you try to gauge what you need. Instructions. Perform a reasoning check, difficulty six, add one to the result if the harbinger is with you. We do not have the harbinger. Difficulty six. This is annoying. Ranger will do the test. We're going to empower this by three to turn it to a one into a black. And we might use a reroll because, good lord, I do not want to be underprepared for the journey. The last one was tedious as all hell. Let's go. Three, four. God damn. Let's spin a reroll to hopefully succeed. I need a two. And we missed. I'll spin another reroll. God damn. Five. We are one to the result. Termination roll is only for attack, right? We don't have bonuses for reasoning, do we? No. Damn it, that was worthless. You try to piece together the details of the journey ahead from what Guide has told you. But only having the knock to communicate, you cannot be sure about the Witchwood's distance to Verum. Does she even experience time and space like you do? The only thing you do know, it's going to be a very long journey. Instructions. You will need to feed yourselves and your allies, Cyprian, Edith, and Marilla. Guide does not need to eat. That's an, That's nice. Can't these people forge from themselves? Place the allied cards for Cyprian, Ethan, Mio in the middle of the table. Done. Gain 10 rations. So now we're at 20. I'm still not comfortable with this. In addition, you may immediately lose one ration to gain two combat tokens of your choice to share among the free company however you want. This may be done up to four times. You may lose one ration to gain any one item from the common item deck. This may be done up to twice. We're going to use one ration to give Ranger back her redraws because we're probably going to need it. And I think that's it. With preparations finally over, you look at your new entourage. Everyone seems nervous, except for Sir Cyprian, who is boasting of his past deeds in colorful detail. Green indeed, but not for long. You learn quickly or you die in the deep wood. Off to the side, Guide stands quite still, her expressionless face revealing nothing of her emotions. You wonder what she thinks of returning to her homeland when your reverie is broken by the arrival of the king, flanked by two watchers. In the hands of one of the watchers is a strange-looking compass which is handed to you. Wherever you go, this will point you back, the watcher says with a rasp. You look at the compass curiously. Made of dark metal richly decorated, you find instead of a needle, it has a small, movable vial in it, filled with a thick red liquid. Strangely, it does not point north, but instead to the raven's spire. You pocket it, making sure to secure it well as you are aware of its value, not in iron, but for survival. As you do so, you barely notice a new member has been added to your troop, a sinewy man in close-fitting leather. His face is indistinct, though he wears no mask. Your eyes slip off him as though he were just another face in the crowd. You look away and almost forget he is there, 
Who or what is that? You ask the watcher who gave you the compass. An asset, he replies. You have your mission. He has his. Well, that's not ominous. Instructions. Perform a reasoning check, difficulty 6, add 1 to the result if the huntress is with you. We do not. And I don't really care enough about this doofus, so we're just going to do a base 3 yellows. Not 3 yellows, 3 whites. See what we get. I swear if I get this. 3, it's whatever. You have no idea who this new addition is, but your gut tells you things just got worse. It's fine. Instructions. Add a time token to the time track. <clears throat> Add city events 11, 12, 13, and 14 to the city event deck. Escorted by the palace guard, you make your way through the city, across the bridge, passing the cathedral, the gutters, and the market. Everywhere, people stop and turn to see you pass. Some are making signs for luck or shouting blessings, but a lot merely return your gaze with an empty stare. As you approach the king's gate, you see the way lined with barricades and enforced by armed guards. The cobbles have been lost to the plague, and its inhabitants are left to fend for themselves. The stench of death is sickening, and you quicken your pace to reach the gate. As you walk past, you notice a large group of peasants approaching the guard line. Looking to you, they cry out, Food for the poor! Please, my lords, help us! The guards become uneasy and stand their ground, weapons grip tightly. These peasants could already be infected. Two options, choose one. Give them two of our rations or keep the rations. You can help them more if you succeed in the mission. I would love to give you my rations, however, I, I can't. I can't risk it. It is not this small crowd you need to save. It is everyone. Anything that jeopardizes that cannot enter your mind. So you avert your eyes and press on until you hear a metallic clang to one side. A stone has been thrown in your direction and others follow. Shields up, commands the captain of the palace guards. The crowd are shouting curses at you and more and more try to break the line of city guards. Mad with hunger and desperation, if they break through out of the quarantine, the plague could spread rapidly through other parts of the city. Look, two rations were not going to help you this much, okay? We have two options. We can help the city guard hold the line and protect the rest of the city, or escape the gate. Your mission is more important. Um, the city guard is the city guard for a reason. We are going to go out the gate. Run, you shout, and everyone hastens away from the city's edge. Behind you, you hear the shouts of soldiers, and finally the sounds of combat. The palace guards keep their shields up, protecting your left and rear side to cover your retreat. Instructions. Two random O-Sworn each lose a plus two Amos token if they have one or a token of their choice if they don't. Ah, uh, why you gotta be this way? Okay. Okay, how do I... Where's that? Okay. okay, so... Uh, one is Mimitata and then going counterclockwise. So bear is two, yada yada. That is a three, so one, two, three. Ranger just loses one of her choice. I guess the Empower. Second one is... Four, Kerr. No plus two Animus, we'll get rid of the battle flow. Look, I'm sorry, guys, but this is a matter of life and death. At the king's gate, the captain of the palace guard hastily wishes you good fortune and creates a defensive semicircle around the gate. You take a last look at the city of Verum before stepping onto the wire road while the gates close behind you. Instructions. Archive the city map of Verum. From Guide's description, you know that the Witchwood lies roughly north of Verum, so you can spend at least the first few days on the Wire Road. You make sure that your new allies know the rules out here. Always keep one hand on the wire. Stay silent and stay together. The archivists and botanists do not seem to be a problem, 
but you catch the knight more often than not with a lack of caution, boasting he is not afraid of monsters. You know he had better be. Like you, Guide has been here before. Outside the city, she has discarded her clothes to become better blended into the woods, occasionally acting as your scout. As you advance, you constantly scan the trees on either side of the road, carefully observing the murky, ever-shifting shadows of the deep wood. Instructions? Add a time token to the time track. After your first days of the journey, the wire road takes a turn to the right. You consult Guide, and she conveys that it is time to leave the road and continue north. You let go of the hard metal wire and step into the twilight of the crooked trees. The familiar sick, mouldy damp of the deep wood fills your nostrils, and one of your allies sneezes loudly, a low rustling in the dark undergrowth a hiss somewhere above you in the unnaturally brown purple canopy. The deep wood knows of your presence. It is almost as if it is waiting for you to venture deeper into its territory. But Guide seems certain of the direction she is taking you, so you follow her, her lithe form moving gracefully among the trees. Not long after, you come across some large overgrown stones that seem man-made. The vegetation to your right seems less thick, and you can see further than usual. As you peer past remnants of a thick wall, completely overgrown with long, tendril-like vines, you realize you are at the edge of an ancient city, long lost to the deep wood, a ghost of Verum's future, should you fail. Instructions. Add a time token to the track. Edith, the archivist, scribbles her findings with deep concentration as she stares at the city. It is the calmest you have seen her since you left Verum. However, you know that you need to continue to move. We have two options. Tell Edith to move along or wait for her to finish her journaling. Bitch, you can do that when you get back to, to the city, okay? Let's move along. Instructions. The free company and expedition members, Cyper, Mir, and Edith, each consume one ration, one for the whole free company. You may choose who to feed. If the free company does not eat, each other will lose one point. For each ally does not eat, in descending order, go to the corresponding entry, read each entry only once. Okay, we are definitely eating. So that puts us down to 18. Do we go down to 15? We have a knight, an archivist, and an herbalist. The herbalist... Uh, we're going to go down to 16 and say... Cyprin, this stupid... This guy is not going to be help to us in combat. Let's, let's be real. So we're just... The other two, well, like civilians, I kind of want to take care of them. This dude is a is a guard and a bogart and a braggart, so who really cares about him? So let's see what happens if Cyprin did not eat. He should have packed his own food anyway. As it becomes clear that Cyprian will not receive a ration, you see anger flare up in the knight's eyes for an instant, but he has it under control. Shortly after, you see him walking around the camp, telling everyone how he has made a sacrifice and now suffers for the weak, but is strong enough to take it. Good for you. Instructions. Place a time token on the Cyprian ally card. We'll, we'll have him eat next time, I guess, but right now, just fuck him. And everyone else... You travel onward, always north, until you come across a huge hollow tree that looks different from the usual deep wood sort. You also notice it is unnaturally quiet here, something that is every bit as much a reason to expect trouble as sudden sound. Without warning, something jumps down in front of you. It is Guide. Homeland, here, she tells you in the knock. As she makes her sounds and signals, small spores drift from Guide and settle on your skin. You suddenly feel a great sense of loss overcome you. Long ago, never again, she signals and turns north. And just what I was fearing, this stupid shit. Instructions. Open mystery box Z. This chapter continues using the deep wood journey rules. You are heading north. Make sure there is enough table space in this direction. Place the first five tiles as shown. Important, it's using the story, but we're not using the story book. Okay, so we have... Let's just start all the way down, shall we? So let's do that. 
only action we have is to go north, and north is we shall go. You walk on in the direction indicated by Guide, who is scouting <clears throat> ahead again. She usually does not stray far from the group, returning frequently to adjust course. You keep the other expedition members close by, taking care to have capable fighters near those who are most vulnerable, especially in the front and rear. As always, you cross the deep wood at your utmost alertness. Every plant can mean death if you are not careful. Consequently, as you hear a snap of a twig to your right, your hand seeks your weapon almost instinctively. A clearing lies ahead of you. You enter, all senses sharp, looking all around. Then you hear a low growl, almost inaudible, behind you. You spin around, scanning the tree line, and spot something moving. It is almost invisible among the trees, much like an adendry. It even seems to be made of the same material, but in its shape it is clearly an animal on four feet. Weapons drawn, you advance slowly towards it, trying to make out what it is. A dog? No. A great hound, and it charges at you with snapping fangs. And we have two options, if we have the Cyprian ally cord or not. We still do. He, he's a little hungry, but maybe we'll see if he earns his keep now. Which has more instructions. Perform a round of combat against Defense 7. Add 2 to each so total as Cyprian health. So we we'll need to do 5. Hello, me, Matari, and semi post here. I just realized I had muted this entire time. So, what we are doing here is doing a round of combat, I believe, uh, with, what's his name, helping us. As you can see, I'm currently doing a bad roll right there, but the good roll is Nimitari gets five, which is enough to do it with the boy's help. Then Bear, I have to redo the mic cubes here because Bear got a new weapon at the end of the last scenario. So he's going to get his four yellow dice. And as you can see, he is going to knock it out the park and get like a, like a seven with a crit that I'm not even using. Because Bear is a beast and doesn't need help from nobody, especially not some lowly little knight who can't even, doesn't even know which way is up. Boom. Crit three, regular three, and a one. Don't even need it. Next, we're going to go up to Ranger. Come on. Come on, Mimitari. We don't need to look at this. Let's go. Next, uh, Ranger rolling, rocking two reds. We are also going to throw in a white for three to roll three dice. <coughs> and we get a good roll here. And it is another seven, which we don't even need your boy's help with. And a crit four and a three. Don't even roll the four because who cares. And then it is Kerr's turn. Kerr's also rocking four yellow dice. And unfortunately for him, uh, he rolls very poorly here. Only a four. One away from succeeding with your boy's help. However, we're not going to spend a reroll. Kerr tends to not take a lot of damage. So having him start with one less hit point should be fine. Watch that come and bite me in the butt. Sir Cyprian proves to be valuable in this fight as the creature's fangs struggle to find purchase on the plates of his armor. Together, you bring it down. The hound is defeated, but still alive. It lays on the ground, twitching. You have never seen something like it in the deep wood. As you look at it, you notice to your horror that it starts to regrow, healing itself. Amber, quick, someone urges, and you hasten to strike a spark and set fire to it. The wooden creature writhes and whines as flames devour its body until it turns into ash. In the distance, a shrill sound echoes through the deep wood as if in answer. Instructions. Place a tracker die in the middle of the table, set it to one. Guide, returning from the woods, takes a look at the half-burnt creature. Its shape and material are still recognizable and her eyes go wide. Her knock tells you, a dendry made this, should not be here. Well, that's comforting. We are going to continue going north because that's where everything is. 
And of course, we immediately hit a dead end because we can't have anything nice. East or west? Right is always right, so we're going to go east. Oh, I forgot to hit instructions. Draw and resolve a deep wood event. Son of a butt. Okay, hi again. Yeah, I was on mute again. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Just ignoring me completely. Anyway, the deep wood event was... Oh, God, what happened to it? If Lucky is not poor the company anymore, or archive this event, draw another. Right now, I'm looking through trying to find Lucky. I know I had him, but I don't know what happened to him. He's not in my tableau right here, as you can see. However, I know that he was with us during the fight where we completely wiped, but the only person who died was the ranger. So, I'm pretty sure I just missed him. And I accidentally deleted him. So what I'm going to do is eventually I will just spawn in a new lucky card and resolve the card as normal. The card is random. Uh, you hear a shout and see Lucky vanish behind some brush. Rushing to his aid, you find he has fallen to a deep pit. Unscathed, he shouts that there is a barricaded cave here. Do you open the cave, turn the card over, or help Lucky out of the pit and orc and leave? Archive this event. We decide to open the cave door to see what's behind it because lucky is lucky, so that must be good, right? So, uh, as you will see, when you flip the cord open, you pry open the cave entrance and sign an amber torch inside. Roll an unused hit point dice and apply the corresponding result. On a 1, a random O Sworn loses 1 hit point. On a 2 to 5, gain 2 items from the common deck. And on a 6, gain 1 curative cord. 10 iron, and 2 items from the common item deck. We roll a 4, getting us a dirk and a steelhead, a good replacement weapon for Kurt, and a good replacement weapon for Bear. And we put those in our bag. And that is all. I will. Let's go back to the story, shall we? Well, after you watch me roll the 4 on a... Because, you know... Gotta show I'm not cheating. But I will see you in a bit. Okay. And we are here after that wonderful fiasco. Uh, come to a dead end. We're going to go east because right is always right. And there's more room on this side of the mob. Seems as good an excuse as any. You walk among the sickly trees, their branches grasping for you like the skeletal fingers, the pale fungus on them, like bulging eyes always watching you. Then you stop. The route ahead is blocked by a field of cysts. Marilla comes to your side, looking at them curiously. Are they plants or animals? It appears to be something in between. How peculiar, how absolutely fascinating. You tell her she does not want to know and turn to discuss alternative routes with Guide. As you do so, Cyprian yells, What's the delay? I do not agree to discuss every single disgusting object we encounter when we could simply cut our way through. He turns to his manservant. Rupert, make yourself useful. Before you can stop him, the manservant runs towards the cyst, sword in hand. A step before he reaches it, the cyst quivers, disgorging its contents all over the man. Reeling away from the cyst, Rupert coughs violently. It's already too late. He has inhaled the spores. You know what you must do. Fucking Cyprian. God damn it. Okay, we have two options. Kill Rupert or tell Cyprian to handle it. We're not going to let this idiot handle it. We're just going to put this dude off his misery right now. You order everyone to stand back and close on Rupert in a guarded stance. Rupert's eyes grow large in realization of what this means. He begins to plead, but your steps do not slow. One swift motion, and you behead the man, killing him instantly. There are gasps of shock, but you need no words to justify your actions. You shoot a disgusted look at Cyprian. The guilt you should feel is clearly absent from his face. You are unfit to lead this expedition, he says to you. 
It's your place to warn me of danger. His death is on your head. You motherfucker. You're not going to get ra- I was going to give you rations because of the way you helped us in combat. Well, at least helped me Matare. But now I'm not so sure. Continue to your location. Okay, now instructions. Place the strength. Yeah, okay, got that. At one point, Guide suddenly stops you. She moves forward slowly, carefully, almost at a crouch. Old homeland defenses, she knocks. Not active. You draw closer and look at the strange plant formations protruding from the ground. They are natural plant material, but it is obvious that no plants grow like this. Guide tries to tell you more, but it is too complex. Ah, English, fucker, do you speak it? Instructions. Perform a reasoning check, difficulty three. Uh, we should be able to do a three, hopefully. Uh, we'll let Ranger do it. Like, Ranger should just speak this. They should be able to communicate together without having to do any types of checks. Good enough, we got it. You just about keep up with what Guide is trying to communicate. These sentries seem to have been some kind of defensive fortifications of the Adendri. You are moving through territory that was part of the Witchwood a long time ago and has since been taken over by the Deepwood. Guide tells you this land was once ruled by a great king, the memory of him consumed by the Deepwood along with his kingdom. She closes with, The land is lost. The battle continues. You think of the hound-like creature that attacked you and the shriek you heard. Something tells you that you have now become part of this battle and that you are being followed. Thank you for that. Instructions. You are being hunted. The die represents the progress of that hunt. Well, that's not good. You just about keep up yeah, with what yeah. guide. Okay, we can go north, south, east, or west. We are trying to go north, so we will continue to go north. Instructions. Let me guess. Put the camp here. Called it. The sun has been a mere smudge of brighter gray these days, in a sky barely visible under the deep wood canopy, with constant rain dripping down onto the already muddy ground. In the rapidly fading light of the early evening, you had almost missed it. But there, in the growing shadows surrounding you, you spot something only humans could have left. The remnants of a camp, a skeleton of a tent, with its cloth torn and tattered, flaps ghostly in the wind. A dark circle of stones, its ashes long since cold and scattered. You wonder who could have ventured so far and what happened to them. You search the tent and find something edible in a small container. Instructions. Gain one rash. Hey, okay. You know what? We might just give this one to Carrion. You can get the stale one that we just found in the middle of the deep wood. Everyone is tired from another day of fighting your way through the deep wood and so you decide to set up camp here as well. As always, you share the watch duty among yourselves. The night is eerily quiet, and you know something is not right, although you cannot say what it is. In the morning, you hurry to leave this place behind you. Instructions. Increase the die in the middle of the table by one. That is not good. Two. And we have options if we do not have clue token one and the die shows two or more, which we do not have clue token one and the die shows two now. So we're going to do that, see what bad things happen. As you continue, you cannot shake the feeling you are being watched. Every time you hear a noise and turn to it, you see a shadow move. More than once you thought you spotted the glint of eyes staring at you from in the greenish twilight. The instructions. Gain clue token one. Okay, that's... Just get it. Perform a spot check difficulty six. Ew. That is terrible.
Okay, I was muted again. I I just I'm terribly sorry. So Kerr did the spot check. Uh, we did an empower times three. I mean, you could tell by looking at it, but just in case, we did empower by three to make it a black. The black and two whites. The black was a three. The white crit, and we got a one on the crit roll to just barely succeed. You continue, vowing to keep your senses sharp to spot whatever it is that's following you. Roaming through the nightmarish landscape, your gaze wanders around and you suddenly see a tree moving. You carefully advance towards it, but as you reach the place where you thought to have spotted it, there is nothing there except for the usual dark, twisted trees of the deep wood. Are we going to fight some Aladandre again? Like, we're, f we're getting stalked by tr walking trees. That sounds like the Aladandre instructions. All Osworn gain a defense token. Okay. Again, we're just going to keep going north. Cyprian has been eyeing you since the incident with the cyst. You can feel him boiling over and are unsurprised when he approaches you, flanked by his men. As of now, I will be taking command. I have witnessed your cowardice and incompetence far too long. You are mere mercenaries, not born to lead as I am. There is no way you are going to let that happen. You know his sort. You will be dead within days. You also know how to deal with them. Well, thanks for the help, but we're probably going to kill you. Instructions. Perform a throwing check, difficulty six, add one to the result the huntress is with you. Why not bear? Bear's very threatening. Anyway. Bear is going to threaten them. Can you see? You cannot. Am I muted? I am not. Okay. Three yellows. I don't want to deal with them, so we are going to empower this by three. Giving me a black. And we are going to roll. And hopefully get a six to threaten this little bitch. I hate this game. Let's see, what will get me... Only a crit black, with a one in six. So we are not going to waste that. So we're just going to fail the check. You keep your voice low and get in his face. In great detail, you describe the various ways the deep wood can kill a man. Burrower swarms and shredder vines, ravener pits and bloat flies. You leave out none of the gory details. You let him know how he better get back in line, walk where you tread and pipe down, or any one of those fates will be his. Shocked at being talked to like that, Cyprian scowls. For a moment, he looks like he will draw his sword, but looking at you, thinks better of it. This is not over, Oath Sworn, he says, pointing a finger at you. It fucking better be, bitch. Instructions. Place a time token on Syrian's ally card. That's another one. I get the feeling we're gonna be losing you pretty soon. You have put it off as long as you can. You need to eat. Instructions. The free company. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, the question is, do we feed this motherfucker? We need four. We have 17. We can go down to 13 and feed everybody. Keep this little bitch happy for a bit. Fine. We'll go down to 13 and keep everybody happy for now. And we're blocked off again. Yay. Uh, while... While right is always right, that's what they're expecting us. We're going to do the old zigzag and go west. Just this once, though. Just this once. You stop mid-stride, and not a moment too early. Directly before you, but barely visible through the rain and the shadows of the trees above, there is a ditch in the forest floor. Are those human remains? You take a closer look. What if I don't want to take a closer look? God damn, instructions. Perform a spot check, difficulty five. Add one to the result if the exile was here. Here's not. So just spotting five. I guess we could find food here, but honestly, I'm not sure if it's worth it. 
so just three whites Let's see what we get a crit white another 66 percent chance to get something good maybe and it crits again we got I don't know something the remains are definitely human and no unfortunate accent or victim of the deepwood this is a deliberately built trap set by someone with a high level of bushcraft. Another thing you notice is the bite and claw marks on the human corpses that remind you of the hound-like creature you had slain. Okay, we can choose directions again, north or east. Always go north. Guide returns from scouting ahead. You had grown a bit restless as she was taking her time. While you admire her natural stealth, and camouflage abilities, you still worry to let her roam the deepwood by herself. If she did not return, you could never hope to find the witchwood without her. This time she has brought you something, a piece of tree bark with small black lumps growing on it. They look a little off-putting, but guide knocks to you they are safe to eat. Well, you are a guide, so I will trust you. Instructions? Gain one ration. Okay, we'll, we'll again give this crappy ra the hell? Oh my lord, I'm having trouble. Gonna give this crappy ration to the idiot. And hopefully it's not good to eat, hopefully it's poison. Instructions? Perform a survival check difficulty six. I don't like this. We do have a redraw for our survival. Okay, so we're going to let, uh, who's got stuff? We're going to let Mimatare do this. We're just going to draw four whites and hope for the best. Two, three, four. We need a six. That's a 30% chance. I'm not going to risk it. We just, we just, we just don't get the survival. You hear a big creature's yelp in the bushes beside you and draw your weapon to meet its attack. A moment later, the asset from the raven spire emerges from the bushes, black blood on their sword. They nod in your direction and return to their place by the fire to clean their weapon. You had almost forgotten that they were there with you and you realize you still do not know a thing about them. Thanks, guy. Oh, you won. You're doing a lot better than this Cyprian, dude. Continue to look at your path ahead is blocked by dense vegetation. You are about to turn back when you see a mound created by a half-buried object, an amalgamation of root and stone, clearly not of human origin. Guide, excited by the discovery, alights the mound on nimble feet and places a hand on its surface. My people make this. The land remembers. You cannot fathom what the object is trying to express in its current state. We dig, guide knocks, the question implicit in her eyes. Okay, we can choose one. If you wish to spend some time to unearth the memorial, choose the top option. Otherwise, choose the direction to go in. Like, guide looks like she's having fun. She helped us get some food. We'll unearth the memorial for her. The memorial is buried under several feet of earth and mulch. Together you carefully clear away the covering of ages and reveal the much larger surfaces beneath. Instructions. Add a time token to the track. I figured that was going to happen. Uh, then. Finally, you step back and survey the picture. In the middle, a strong humanoid figure takes aim with its long bow the sun shining above his head, where you also notice some spikes that could be horns or a crown. Other people are depicted beneath him in a submissive stance. This must be the old Adendri king that Guide was telling you about. Says he survived birth of Deepwood, Guide taps out. This is a warning. He is landless, but still protects Adendri borders from beasts and tree killers. You ask who the tree killers are, and in reply she simply points at you. Returning your gaze to the depiction, 
you see beside the king there are some creatures, a large bird of prey, and three hounds. You realize what this means. The king is alive, and you killed his dog. He is coming for you. Isn't this just the plot to John Wick? Also, I did not kill any puppers. I love the puppers. Instructions. Reveal the encounter special rules board. Okay. And... What am I looking at? Mark the special... Oh, smart the special rule box for chapter 10. Story. So, let us look at the special rules for chapter 10. Da 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 da. A laundry. The Forgotten King. Yeah. How? These things don't have names. Like, how am I supposed to know? Whatever. They are small, though, which is... There are traps a little bit, boy. There's a hound. Hawk, hound. Where's he, though? Where's the Forgotten King? Oh, here he is. I guess he starts off the board. Anyway, let's look at the special rules. The Forgotten King had... I don't like how he has a mic track that is not completely filled out. Uh, his might is two black, one red. Defense five. His pack has two reds each. Defense five. That's annoying. Start encounter. Place two yellow cubes in the open space of the king's might track. The king starts off the game board hidden. There are ten location tokens on the game board that will represent areas you need to search. I don't see ten, but... Is it traps? I guess it's the traps. Tracking a trap. When a character moves on to a location token, draw a white. If the core shows a two, that character triggers a trap. The trap triggers, draws off a stage three core with the character as a target. Damn. Whether or not the trap triggers, choose the location token on the encounter board. For every five tokens moved to the encounter board, remove one yellow cube from the king's might track. Once all location tokens have been removed from the game board, Place a forgotten king on the game board and the closest empty hex the last character to move a location token. That sounds disgusting. Hidden Hunter. If the king is not on the game board, he will target the westernmost Osworn. He is always considered to be in range and have line of sight to his target. Eternal Hunt. The king is accompanied by three bioform creatures. They are only activated by stage cords and use the minion targeting rules. They each have a hit point die that must be removed to win the encounter. Moving these dice triggers a reaction as normal. Fuck off. Unknown. While the king is not on the game board, all stage cards are kept face down and not revealed until they resolved. Once the king is on the board, reveal the top core of the melee deck. It will be revealed from here on out as usual. How many decks does he have? How does this work? There's a range, there's a trap, there's a melee. Okay, whatever. Um, the stages. The king has modes rather than stages. When he ha must draw a stage card, he will either draw from the melee or range deck. If he's not on the game board, he will draw from the range deck. If he is on the game board, he will draw from the melee. If a deck ever becomes depleted, shuffle the discard card from the deck and draw a new deck. Okay, this is going to be f fucking annoying. Okay, now we choose a direction to go. Only direction we can go is south. So we shall. You have put it off as long as you can. You need to eat. Um... Okay, I think I know what happened with Lucky. Uh, as you can see, the other dude's fucking thing disappeared. So, clearly, that's what happened, I think. Anyway, we're going to get him back. Delete. He has two tokens on him. There's one. There's two. Okay, 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 okay. So, put off as long as we can. We have to eat. Who do we want to not 
We're definitely eating, so we're down to 13. Uh, Cyphel's being a little bit, so we're going to let him eat a bit. 12. And one of these people will eat... We'll let the herbalist eat, so Edith will be the one not to eat. We're going to start rationing a bit. Yeah, it instructions. I've done the instructions like five times, Rodan. Right? Yeah, yeah. Edith will not have eaten. The next morning, as everyone leaves camp to continue the journey, one of the scribes shyly approaches you. He is usually sweet and funny, but his look is dark this morning. It's Lady Edith. We can't get her to move. He gestures toward the camp. The archivist is sitting on a tree trunk and with a shaky hand writes in the book she always keeps on her person. The other scribe is crouching beside her, seemingly trying to talk sense into her, her eyes glittering with tears. You stride over, telling her it's time to go, but she continues to write without looking up, waving you away as if you are distracting her from important work, mumbling, I need to record it, so many horrors they need to know. She is obviously unwell. No shit, she's unwell. I can either convince her to keep moving or give her a ration. Like, I said I was rationing the ration, so we're just going to try to convince her to keep moving. Instructions. Perform a reasoning check, difficulty six. We are not going to reason with this bitch, are we? Again, we're going to do Mimitade, rolling four, not doing anything because fuck this bitch. Two, three, four. We do crit white. 30% chance to succeed. We got it. Easy game, easy life. She takes some convincing, but you eventually manage to drag her to her feet and start her moving. Her feet do the rest, this time. Instructions. Place a time token on the Edith card. Yeah, yeah. Then all the everybody else ate. All right, we're gonna go east because north was the dead end. Yoink. We are going to continue to go east because south is the camp. Time triggered story. If I have Cryprian, Alex, I still do have Cryprian. Don't know for how long, but. We'll see if, hopefully we don't have to kill another one of his damn allies. You lay back on your bedroll, having oiled and sharpened your weapons. On the verge of sleep, you hear Cyprian and his squire talk. You know they have the first night watch. From their argument, you can deduce that the boy is questioning an order to guard outside the firelight at the edge of camp. The notion is a sensible one. You open your eyes just in time to see the knight raise his hand to strike his squire the fire reflecting on the polished steel of his heavy gauntlet. You know what? Fuck this, dude. We're going to intervene to defend the squire. You shout. Surprised, the knight turns to you. You stride toward them with a curse on your lips and a command to stand down. The knight does not wait for you to finish the sentence. His hand comes hard across the boy's face. He should follow orders. The squire falls down and gingerly touches the cut on his head, where blood is beginning to well out. You shoot Cyprian a furious look and extend a hand to help his squire up. Tears brim in the boy's eyes as he takes your hand. I will take the oath, he says. Everyone falls silent for a moment, respectfully taking in his momentous decision. You know what that means, you ask. I do, better than dying at his hands. You cannot argue with that logic and let Cyprian know that this puts the boy under immediate protection from your free company and that he is obliged to free Willem from his service. Through gritted teeth, the knight utters, This is the thanks I get from my patronage. You are a fool, boy. He looks at you, about to say more, but he knows, as well as anyone, that once the words are out, there will be no taking them back. I mean, I don't know if that was the best decision for you, boy, but welcome to the Oathsworn Instructions. 
Gain the ally card 31, William. Here is William. He's got a nice little archer. Move four. Oof. You come into the board with any three combat tokens. That's pretty neat. He looks like he just joined the Night Watch. Add Deepwood event 35. 35 to the Deepwood. Oh, this should be back. And City event 35. The woods become very dense. Tree trunks almost touching each other sometimes growing into one another. Your group has to stretch out as you have to walk behind each other to make sure you stay on the same path. You raise your hand to stop the group. This would be a perfect place for an ambush. That's not ominous. Instructions. Perform a spot check difficulty five. Uh, who would have the best eyes? And by that, I mean the best reroll tokens. I guess Kerr. We're gonna roll four. Two. I would need a crit and then something good to even do this, so we're just not gonna do it. We're gonna fail the spot check. Probably gonna get ambushed, have to do two rounds of combat, and everybody's gonna take a point of damage. Anyway, let's just go. You listen intently and watch your surroundings closely for a few moments. But there are no signs of trouble, so you move on. After a few steps, you hear the hiss of an arrow, followed by a cry of shock and pain. Whoops. Instructions. One random Oswan loses one hit point. Okay. Who is the unlucky person? Uh, again, Mimitati will be one and two Ursa and clock counterclockwise in that matter. Three, so Ranger loses one. That's fine. Ranger tends to stay back. And we get, if we if we still have Cyprian as an ally card, so let's see what he has to say. Ambush! You, check the front! Cyprian shouts as he pushes one of his entourage ahead of him. The knight servant stumbles forward, fear in his eyes, until suddenly a thick branch comes rushing out of nowhere, pinning his chest to the nearest tree. He has walked right into some kind of trap. We can either try to rescue his member or try to flee with everyone in tow. I don't think this dude's worth it, so we're just going to flee. Sorry, guys. You have no visibility on the archer, and there is little room to maneuver. You need to get out of here. You cannot risk everything for one man alone, and so you turn and run with the others. You see Willem, Cyprian's squire, stay back and try to free the servant. The knight turns and shouts at him to get going. As Willem does not obey immediately, Cyprian draws his dagger and slits the trapped servant's throat. The young squire cries out in horror as the knight drags him away. Well, god damn. I mean, a little ruthless, but in the deep wood, you know, that's respectable. You kind of got to do what you got to do to survive. And that's like the first sensible thing Cyprian did. You all run along the narrow path and through the underbrush, jumping over giant roots, evading slimy growing things and suspicious-looking plants everywhere. Finally, as your lungs and legs burn from the effort, you slow. Then you round on Cyprian and demand he explains his deed. The knight shrugs, his face cold. Quick decisions and sacrifices are part of every war. Who knows what information they could have got out of him? Willem... The knight squire turns away to hide the tears streaming down his face. I mean, I was going to say, like, better a quick death at our hands than slow torture from whatever's in the deep wood. But, I mean, still. Instructions. Increase the die in the middle of the table by one. We are being hunted. The die represents. So that's a three. We're halfway there. Maybe. And if you do not have clue token, what we do have clue token one. If you do not have clue token, two, we don't have the clue token two, but the die is only three, so we will do otherwise. Choose a direction to go, and we're going to continue to go in north. You come across a huge fallen tree, slowly decaying on the ground, its enormous trunk blocking your path. You begin to walk around it when you notice another trunk growing into another. You examine the tree some more, walking up its length, and also finding two big main branches growing from the main stem, one of them broken. The peculiar tree has become a habitat of some gross deepwood insects 
wriggling around inside it. Finally, you come to the tree's crown and immediately notice something is not right. Where there should be branches and twigs, there are long vines protruding from the tree, lying flat on the floor of the forest, sinking into it like roots. They remind you of... Guide. She steps toward the top of the tree and touches the area that could once have been a face. Now only slimy things grow there. Then she conveys ancient male adendri, long dead. She follows one of the vines and pokes around its underside a bit. Under it, there seems to be a hidden crevice and you can see a faint glow in it. Okay, we can choose one. If you wish to help her lift the vine, choose the top option. Otherwise, choose a direction to go in. Man, we're not going to get the extra unique item. Oh, well. So, I think we will help her lift the vine. Yeah, let's just help her lift it. Together, you lift the heavy vine from the ground. Inside the crevice, you find some old adendry spores that are beginning to stir. In a moment, they will be in the wind. Uh, we have two options. If we have an adendry oswan, or if not, we do have ranger who is adendry. You take the old yet powerful spores left by the ancient. A rush of memory and emotions floods your being. You see the frenzy of a battlefield. Deep wood monstrosities are coming for you and your kin. The defense lines collapse. You are broken, your life slowly seeping into the earth of your homeland. Your land is lost, and so are you. The land changes. It belongs to the enemy now. The others are dead. There is only loneliness and endless decline for centuries, until your last day when he comes for you. You see a great adendry standing before you, with crown-like horns on his head, and the shining bow and sword. The king lives. He bows to you, a last token of respect to a dying subject before his blade descends. You shiver as your own consciousness takes over again. You look over to the place where you saw the Adendri king in the ancient's last living moments. You feel something, but then it is gone. Instructions. All Oswan gain a redraw token. That's always useful. Instructions. Increase the die in the middle of the table by one. We are up to four. And then, if you do not have clue token one, we do have two token one. If you do not have clue token two, we don't, and the die shows four or more, so we will do that option. You notice the deep wood has become deathly silent, but for the low dribble of rain. You give the sign to freeze. Instructions. Gain clue token too. Okay, we got the second clue token. And perform a listening check at difficulty seven. We are not going to do this. We're going to say a Dendry Ranger does this. Four dice. Not going to do nothing. And. Uh, did I? I did not show this. I rolled four. I got two blanks, a two, and a crit two, which rolled into another two. So now I have a 60% chance to succeed. So yeah, now we are going to spend a redraw token and hope to get the 60%. And we barely did. Let's go. Okay. You hear something on both sides of you, moving fast, above. You hear a rustle in the leaves. This is not a good place to take an ambush. Automatically, you command the expedition to make a break for some higher ground not far off. Reaching an elevated copse of bent trees, you form a defensive circle and stand at the ready. Just beyond vision, you can hear the prowling. You have heard these noises before, emanating from the hound you had slain. There is something else, too, in the trees above. These creatures are not your usual deep wood fear. They know their ambush has failed, 
and after a time they disappear back into the woods, out of sight, but certainly not out of mind. Continue going north. Uh, let's show you the map. There we go. So, this is where we started, and this is where we're at. We are going to keep moving north and see where that takes us. Time triggered story. We still have Erdeth. Yep, and, and she's completely well fed too, so hopefully this goes. In the evening, everyone huddles around the campfire, telling each other stories to lighten the mood. But you notice someone is missing. Edith is sitting on the ground, wrapped in a blanket, paging through her book. You go over to invite her to join in, but she shakes her head. I just need to be alone for a while. I'm, I'm not used to being around people all the time, let alone outside the city walls without any privacy. I never wanted this. I was ordered to accompany you on this ordeal of a journey. She sounds exhausted, and you decide better to leave her to herself as requested. As you turn away, you hear her mutter something below her breath. Even the Deepwood is watching me. I know. You pause for a moment and look at her, but she is lost in her book again. When you leave to return to the crackling fire, your eyes scan the darkness surrounding you, and you know she is right. You have felt it too. Something is watching. Yeah, everything's watching us in the deep wood. Continue to your location. Guide comes back from scouting ahead and explains, Journey end. Close. She seems to hesitate before adding more signs that translate to Announce us. To Adendri. Permit me. With that, she is letting you sense her feelings of fear and doubt. Like all the Adendri you have met, who now call the green streets of Verum home, she has escaped from that place once already. She has never revealed all of what happened in her homeland, or why they fled. But from what you have pieced together, there is some form of control or domination at work there. We have two options. Let the agenda know of your coming, or tell her not to reveal your presence, as it could be seen by someone else. Uh, I mean, she's the guide. We're going to let her announce us. Instructions. Perform a reasoning check. Difficulty 5. Oh, Lord. 555. Five, five. We're going to let Mimitari take the helm on this one with four. We don't have any reason. No, we just have survival. Four. And let's see. Y'all can see this, right? Yeah. That is terrible. Not wasting any redraws on that. You tell Guide how far you have come and that wavering so shortly before your goal is foolish but that does not seem to soothe her fears. The Adendri has grown more and more restless while you have talked. Finally, she knocks to you. He is coming. We need to hurry. With that, she turns to set off. You are not sure what she means, but you have grown to trust her judgment on imminent danger. Increase the die in the middle of the table by one. So we're up to five. We do not have clue token three, and the die shows five or more, so we are on clicking that. You hear the twang of the tripwire. No sooner had the sound pricked your ears than a rush of leaves and a single body fly into the air. You turn to see one of your allies dangling in a tree by the foot, high enough to break the neck should they fall. Instructions. Draw a random combat ally and place his core in the middle of the table. Okay. Let's see who we get. We have a lot. Uh, so we just have our entire party with us, canonically? Okay. That is 13 people. One, two, three. And we get the golem. Okay, that's not going to kill the golem. Their comrades are pleading with you to help them, but you realize this is all the trappings of another ambush. Instructions. Gain clue token three. Their comrades are pleading with you yeah, to help yeah. them, but you realize... We can choose one. We can leave them free or take the risk and attempt to cut down the golem. 
Yeah, this is an ambush, so we're just going to flee. Sorry, Gollum. Wish it was somebody else, but, I mean, easy come, easy go, I suppose. Your foremost responsibility is to ensure the mission's success. The fact that it is one of your own in that tree does not change that. How many bodies lay on the other side of the choice to save them? Whatever it is out there wants you to try. No, you cannot risk it. You give the order to run while your ally screams for the life up in the tree. Moments later, it is silenced by the thud of an arrow. You try to take solace in the fact it could have been a lot worse. That that story is a lot funnier when it's the golem because like it it can't talk. It's an inanimate construct. It, are these things actually sentient? Instructions. You lose the ally in the middle of the table. Archive of the cord. Okay. And again, we have a choice of which direction to go. And again, we're going to continue north. Instructions. Perform a spot check. Difficulty eight. Add one to the result if you have an addendary. So we do have an addendary, so it's a difficulty seven spot check. Uh, this is terrible. <laughs> We're going to roll five dice. Is that even worth? And have me Matade do it. Doink. Two, three, four, five. A crit white. We might actually succeed this. Two, four, five, six, seven. Into another crit white. No, we're so close. We're doing a redraw. Wait, two, four, five, six, seven, plus one makes eight. I don't have to do a redraw. I did I did a difficulty eight using only white dice. That's amazing. Here and there you catch a glimpse of a shadow moving alongside you, behind the trees. Despite the fact that you have not had a good look at your pursuer, you are dead certain that you are being followed. You tell the group to pick up pace. You need to reach your goal, and soon. Okay, we can either go south or west. South is going down, so we're obviously going to continue west. You make camp and assign the night watch. After the day you have had, and this deep into enemy territory, you offer to take the first watch. As the others bed down, you settle into a nearby tree with a good vantage point. All is quiet until near the end of your stint. Instructions. Choose two Oswarm to be the first watch. Each of the Oswarm performs a listening check. Difficulty seven, add one to result if you are the Kerr. So obviously Kerr is going on first watch. And Mimitare. So we need sixes, so we're both going to roll four whites. See what we get, Mimitare first. Can you see this? Yes, you can. The hell is that? Three. Okay, four. That's not enough. Let's see what Kerr does before we do any rerolls. Not that I probably am. Ooh, that's terrible. One, two, three. Yep, we failed the check, which is probably not good. The din and darkness of the deep wood are not your allies in this and you miss the telltale slithering in the underbrush. Only as the thing without a face oozes into the firelight do you manage to raise the alarm. A moment later, the rest of the company is on their feet. The thing is upon them. Instructions. Perform a round of combat against if it's nine, each Oswin is where it loses a random combat token of a hit instead of a hit point. Well, I guess that's okay. Imitati has a black and two whites. We're not doing this. F a crit black, which... I mean, maybe. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Imitati is good. Next is bear. One, four. Whoa, those just... I mean... That was a roll, so we'll just say that, since considering they just splattered all over the place. 
three, four, five, six, seven. Did Bear get this too? No. And we have six, so let's get. Now we need to keep that like that. So five. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. So he loses a defense die. Next, it is Ranger. Two reds and a white, why not? Three, four, five, six. He also loses one. Where'd that D4 go? Uh, the defense token is a one going clockwise. Four, so the empower three, that's bad. And then occur. A crit yellow. Another crit yellow. We'll use a redraw and hopefully not get that. Sunk cost fell, see, we'll do it again. Okay, so he lost two redraws, but I mean, whatever. Should have just not done it. And then. Gelatinous flesh slides off your weapons. The thing had been big and slow, though its secretions seemed to have a numbing effect on you. You are glad it did not catch you while you slept. You doubt you would have woken. The rest of the night passes uneventfully. As you pack your things with the rain pounding on your faces in the early dawn of the next morning, you dole out the rations. Instructions. Everybody has to eat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have 11 rations between four people. We're just going to give everybody some food, so we're down to seven. All allies, eight. Continue to location. The trees thin and become of a type you are unfamiliar with. They are still twisted and rot-eaten, even some strangled by deep wood vines, yet they still cling to life. The stench of rotting wood and flesh enters your nose, and looking around you see hundreds of mounds litter the earth. Dead things, both a dendry and deep wood, of all sizes and forms. Many of them bear scratch or teeth marks. The small are trampled, the large are broken, and all show signs of fungal growth. To your left, a great living turret, the size of the broken oak, lies tipped on its side, its underbelly rent open. In front of it, a dozen mounds of dead meat, protruding bone and muscle, give testament to its final act. To your right, packs of the slain lay scattered around a solitary figure, a female adendry, bow broken and spear shattered. From their poses and death, you can tell this is a battlefield, and from the looks of it, nobody won. You must be closing on the border, or perhaps this was the border not long ago. Either way, you need to keep moving. You're losing the light, and will need to camp soon. We just got back from the camp. Instructions. All Osworn gain a defense token. Obviously, we're still going north. A low fog is crawling in, making it impossible to see anything outside of your torch's radius, especially on the ground, where you suspect to walk into some bizarre trap any minute. All sounds are dulled, and the damp makes your clothes wet, so they stick to your body, rubbing it sore. When darkness falls, you still press on, stumbling more than walking, clinging to hope that you will soon reach the fabled witchwood. You ask Guide, for an estimate, but she does not have a good answer. Finally, some in your party refuse to take another step, for they are too weak to go on. Your bones tell you this is a bad idea. You drive them on further, but as some begin to collapse, you know you have no choice. Grudgingly you set up camp, but make sure to double the night watch guard. You are having a nightmare. Someone in your dream is crying for help and you cannot move. Your eyes open, but the cries continue. It is not a dream. You rush to your feet, gripping the weapon beside you, and peer into the early morning light. This is it. 
two options if we have Ert Edith or not. We still do. It is Edith at the edge of the camp. She kneels on the ground, writhing in pain. She has clearly tried to relieve herself beyond the firelight, and that had been when the trap sprung. One mistake is all it took. How many of those traps were out there? Both her hands seem to be trapped in some sharp living contraption. Under it, you can see her book. She screams, and you can see the violent red shine on her small, delicate fingers. One of your companions is already trying to free her while clamping a hand over her mouth. It is too late, though. Another sound sets in, a deep howling from the woods. With your back to the fire to protect your night vision, you peer into the tree line. Instructions. Perform a spot check. The difficulty is equal to the number of the die in the middle of the table. If you fail, you'll be ambushed. Mark the ambush bar for the chapter 10 on your free company sheet. Okay, we don't want to be ambushed. So, it's a spot check of five. We don't have that. Ah, uh, frack. We will let Mimatade do it. He's got a lot of rerolls. Four dice. Can you see? Yes, you can. Come on, five. Two, three. We're going to reroll. 30% chance. Four. Reroll. 66% chance. Five. Okay. No. No ambush for us. Thank you. You see the light of the fire reflected in predatory eyes fixed on you. There are beasts, but no hunter. Where is an arrow? Blossoms from Edith's chest, ending her screams. You need to find this guy, or none of you will get out of here alive. Well, bye, Edith. Ah, damn. Instructions. Archive the Edith ally card. Yeah, no shit. Lost two allies today, Edith and the Gollum. If you have the mystery chest open and protrude the chapter 10, the encounter. Okay. Encounter. Da 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 da. Instructions. After the encounter, continue to the epilogue. Okay, that is it for the story. Where we, be hunted, where we were being hunted by the Aladandre King and his beasts and birds. And next time, we will try to take these down, even though, good lord, do they have a lot of defense. Although they don't have a lot of hit die, so I guess that they only got the one hit die each, and... Like, these things don't have names. I'm going to... I guess, judging by the location... This guy's the. This is obviously the king because he has two hit die. I'm guessing this is the bird, and these two are the wolves. That's just what we're gonna go by. And then, uh, that is it for today. So until next time, take care.